Oilon Wise Drive is a microprocessor based burner control and safety system. The advantages of the system are efficient combustion, low flue gas emission, and increased safety. The control panel functions are illustrated with graphic symbols for better usability. Oilon Wise Drive system is suitable for both continuous and intermittent operation. The benefits the system offers you are precise ratio setting and the possibility to restore alarm diagnostics. Setting the basic parameters and backing up data can be done on the control panel and with a computer. The system has versatile field bus connection possibilities and the operator is able to monitor diagnostics and settings remotely. The components are specially designed for the system. This ensures continuous operation and safety. The system supervises the components related to safety functions with continuous self-testing. The Wise Drive Burner Control System serves for the best possible burning result and usability. Site personnel monitor system operations on a computer screen. The control panel is the user interface for the system. The control unit operates the burner. The server motors operate and control airflow, fuel flow, the bus cable transmits information between system units and to and from the control panel. The optional oxygen sensor observes the residual oxygen levels. The optional frequency converter adjusts the fan motor rotation speed. Standard Wise Drive delivery includes a control unit, a control panel, server motors for fuel regulation, a server motor for the air dampers, and a bus cable. The Wise Drive system is available for all modulating oil-on industrial burners with a wide range of options. Before you start commissioning or servicing the burner, check that you have all the necessary tools and documents. You will need the burner manual, either a paper copy or a soft copy on a laptop. Make sure you know the system password in case you need to log into the system. You may also use a laptop for storing and restoring system data. In the burner manual, you can find detailed instructions for installing and mounting the burner. Make absolutely sure that the fuel piping and installation are laid according to the regulations of local authorities and that the burner is connected according to the electrical diagrams delivered with the burner. Pay special attention to the requirements for electrical equipment and their connections. Ensure that plant grounding is done correctly before commissioning the burner. Before the first startup, always check the fuel lines, electrical equipment, and hoses along with their connections. Naturally, there should be fuel available and sufficient amount of water in the heating system. Make sure that piping is installed correctly and its joints are tight and have no leaks. You should check that the piping valves are opened and then test the gas piping carefully for leaks. Using the pressure gauge, make sure that the fuel pressure is adequate. Check that electrical connection points, inputs and outputs, as well as the motor rotation direction are correct. Burner control system monitors the input and output and the bus interface. Improper connections cause burner lockout. For oil use, the oil booster's oil pump must be vented and the oil filter installed. Now you can switch the power on. The control panel is what you use for monitoring the burner and adjusting settings. First, Open the main menu by pressing the Enter button. The first three icons are the Information menu, Manual Operation menu, and Settings menu. You can move between the icons using the arrow keys. Here, the Settings menu is selected and shown highlighted. Press Enter to open the menu. On this menu level, you can see a key symbol, a password change icon, and a menu for the operation panel, 
where you can change screen brightness and other settings. First, you should log in with a password. Highlight the key icon and press Enter. You can type in the password using the arrow keys. On the first operation level, you can only monitor the burner operation. Entering the next level with a password enables you to commission the burner and change settings. After setting the password, press the back button to return to the previous menu. The frequency converter parameters must be set for the fan motor control. Refer to the manufacturer's manual. The settings you need to change are the acceleration and deceleration time and maximum and minimum frequencies. You can find detailed instructions in the burner manual. The fan motor provides air pressure for efficient combustion. The variable speed module adjusts the air pressure according to the burner's capacity by controlling the fan speed. Curves are set in the settings menu. Setting the curve starts with choosing the icon with a curve symbol and the word edit. Pressing enter opens the menu and you can set the points. Start the burner. The first point is the ignition point and it's preset. You can see the symbol for the ignition point in the bottom corner. Changes are made by pressing Enter. S is a set value, and I is the value where the adjustment device is at the moment. Pressing the arrow keys will change the adjustment. Actuators follow all changes. You can save by pressing Enter. You can move on to the next point by pressing the arrow button up. This takes you to 200. You can change it by pressing Enter and then move sideways between the actuators to make necessary changes. Save the changes by pressing Enter and continue with the following points the same way. The number of curve points is preset and cannot be changed. It's recommended to adjust all the preset points for the burner because a complete curve will enhance the burner's performance significantly. Remember to fill in the measurement report for burner. When the burner adjustments have been made, it's time to set the boiler operating temperature or pressure. After that, you need to set the on and off operating limits. Enter the PID menu and set the boiler temperature or pressure limit values. The preset option for the capacity controller in the burner control is automatic. Depending on the burner and boiler conditions, you might need to change this to atmospheric conditions or external firing rate input. For more information, refer to the manual. Finally, you need to set the burner operation to automatic.
Manual operation is for situations where you don't want to or are not able to use the automation. You can start manual operation by selecting the hand icon and pressing enter. After opening the manual operation menu, you can start the burner by pressing enter, even if the burner has no starting permission. The burner starts. After the burner has run to minimum capacity, you can increase the capacity manually. It's increased by selecting the capacity with the arrow keys. All actuators follow automatically. Note that at least one curve point must be set, otherwise the burner will not start. When you exit this menu by pressing the back button, the burner stops automatically unless the burner has received a starting permission. The fault history menu is important for all burner operators. The error code in the history list will indicate the fault that has stopped the burner. Access the menu by pressing enter. You will find an icon for the control unit and pressing enter there again will open the fault history. The display shows the last 10 faults. You can browse through them and if you require more information on a specific fault, just press enter to see the details. Detailed information on the error codes can be found in the manual. Pressing back repeatedly will take you back to the main menu. Now that you have carefully commissioned the burner, Oilon Wise Drive will operate your burner efficiently.